concerning liberties and rights, everyone should have a full package, a full list of rights and liberties, and they cannot be um, an object of bargaining, blah, blah, blah. Even that is not justice according to, to what we uh, usually use as justice. Justice is that uh, that a child gets a minor part of the, the cake. Yeah, this is justice. Uh, do, you, justice. Do, you, do you have a problem then with the notion of justice as fairness? Y yes, of course I have. You do? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't understand why. Are we talking about roles or justice and fairness in general? In general, if you want to put it in a way of that role, ah, as opposed uh, to fine. Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah. No, uh, Alessandro mentioned, uh, I, I should have brought uh, that uh, too, um, that I think, and I developed that in the German version of my paper, that this relative interpersonal concept of justice can be spelled out in eight different respects, and I, I didn't uh, present that. And one of that is fairness, uh, of course, fairness. Uh, fairness means an impartial rule application, impartial application of rules. So, um, as in my, my um, example of the hurdle race, so you have six runners or whatever, and you are applying the same rule to everyone. Everyone has the same training conditions, everyone gets the same equipment, the same shoes, uh, sporting dress uh, and so on. And then uh, there will be a shoot and the, the runners are starting and the first three are rewarded and the last three are punished. So it's a perfect fair situation. How is that fair, Professor? <laughs> Yeah, in terms of rule application, it's an it's an impartial rule application. May I? But we are again at the robbery example. Yes. Is that not fair? Uh, once you accept that there is permissible that someone is going to the galley. Yeah. But this is precisely. I mean, you understand. You yeah. uh, understand. Is that one? Presuppose. You, yes, but you are presupposed that the defendant of the idea of justice would think Such it as that acceptable. Yeah, yeah. This is towards my point with the rob with the, with the bank. I mean, why do you think that the 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 robbers are more are doing something morally wrong? Because what they do is unjust. Why do you think that what the nun is admirable? Because it is just. The nuns are not giving meals to rich people. They are giving meal to poor people. This is the moral word, the moral word of this action. And why? Because they are poor people. No. And so, uh, uh, justitia correctiva or uh, form of corrective justice make this action uh, morally correct. If they would give free meal to rich people, that would be morally irrelevant. And uh, this is precisely the point. If uh, uh, you all you all, for, take the racism. Why is racism wrong? Racism wrong because it doesn't treat person equally. So it has to do with equality, not with dignity. It has to do with the fact that it would I be astonishing yes. for Mill to yes. call the act of charity or beneficence an act of justice. So what the nuns do, according to Mill, is not justice, they are practicing charity and beneficence. And what I would say, according to my concept, is the basic currency of morals and of political philosophy, but let's take only morals, is good and bad. So it is good. It is good that they are distributing meals and perhaps we can learn something from this early modern or 19th century idea of several obligations, several types of uh, this natural law uh, idea of several types of obligation. And uh, of course you are, you are right, in many cases, uh, in not so few cases, <laughs> you put like that, um, justice is relevant and fairness as an impartial rule application is a moral Aspect. Oh, so you would but concede as much, but, but you would concede as much. You would concede that perhaps in some cases 
an aspect of fairness might be interesting for an aspect of justice. Absolutely. You would concede uh, this absolutely. much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this is interesting. Uh, okay. But, but by far not in every case. Okay, fine. Yeah, so, so it is, so it is uh, misleading. Uh, <laughs> Um, I, I'm very radical, I, I know, it, uh, it, but it is misleading that Rawls called his um, political theory justice as fairness, uh, justice as fairness theory. Uh, so he has some basic intuitions, but these basic uh, intuitions are uh, helpful or not helpful, but, 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 but of course they are not uh, based on justice. At least not according to our common use of, of the word. Um, by the way, I, I once discussed my my paper with an English-speaking scholar, and <laughs> he said, "Oh, justice in our English common language has more or less disappeared. If, uh, for instance, a child calls a distribution of pieces of cake unjust, then you can be sure that it is uh, the son of a lawyer." <laughs> it's uh, it is unfair and, and so on, uh, or it, it has uh, disappeared. Uh, of course, what I, I I don't know how it is in in Portuguese. No, we use it all the time. Yeah, we use it. You use it. Yeah. We don't have unfair. Yeah, but we don't have unfair. That's the thing. We don't have unfair. Yeah, but but do you share this Aristotelian idea in in Portuguese that? Um, there is a um, more specified sort of justice, and that has to do with uh, cases of how goods and burdens, uh, benefits yes. and burdens yes. are. I, 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 think, yes. uh, I think we do that in every of the modern languages which I, I know. That's interesting. And, yeah. and of, of course, in ancient times, so, uh, Aristotle uh, defines that in Book five of the Nicomachean Ethics against the background of a culture in which one could say everyone who does something morally wrong is adikos and that is unjust. So they could say that yeah? adikain uh, committing unjustices. Yeah? So I'm being cultural enough. Ha! I'm being cultural enough. No, no. Saying, you know, the Greek Shuck. could say it was unjust, but we cannot say this. No, no. So in their culture, it was unjust. In ours, it's wrong. No, no, no. Um, the point is, uh, it is not so contingent in in every of the modern languages. In uh, broadly speaking, the European languages of of, of uh, this language a linguistic family, um, it's something has become impossible, which was possible in Greek, in ancient Greek namely to express normative adequacy or inadequacy in terms of justice and unjustice. And in our languages, in our modern languages, it has become unjust. But we have one uh, curiously uh, interesting um, historical leftover uh, relic, and, and that is the fact that Cicero, in his theory of, of duties and obligations in the day of Fikis, um, um, described some of the Ophikia as Ophikia of justice. Yeah? And uh, that leads a life in the natural law tradition, a life of its own. This semi-technical use had continued to make a career. So, if I had the time to write a book on the conceptual history of, of justice, uh, I, I once edited it in the volume uh, here uh, containing all these uh, curious theories of justice from... Uh, from <laughs> uh, if you take, for instance, if, if, for instance, David Hume, it's an absolutely curious uh, theory of justice. Um, so, <clears throat> um, if I had the time, I would like to point out that it is a history of, um, of a relic which uh, is not um, which is not present in our common language. So, so we, we cannot speak that way. It's, it's a semi-technical use.
to, even to call um, to to call uh, uh, robots unjust. I wouldn't call robots unjust. They are bad. Meta has a question. Yeah, well, uh, of course we can uh, keep this conversation going uh, endlessly. Uh, just to make sure I understand your point here. So what really bothers you with definition or the, the whole thing of coming up with a conception of justice as fairness is this uh, primacy of our rights over goods because it seems to me that in the way uh, our laws is bringing in fairness, as uh, Fabrizio pointed out, is precisely thinking of the rules of the game. Like if you think of a FIFA's a motto, fair play, or fairness in a relational, you know, given very common uh, daily situations, uh, it's more understandable uh, or be closer to what you, you said at the very beginning of your paper. They have to think in terms of uh, ordinary common language usage of the term. So I can see your point that fairness in, uh, in English, or especially in American English, is precisely what, what Rawls had in mind when he was talking about justice. In the same way that for us in, in, in Brazil, or in Portuguese, when you talk about justice, the, uh, the word is directly related to a right and uh, doing justice to something or to someone. When you say fazer justice, doing justice to someone. It's a common expression that anyone understand, would, uh, would understand in Portuguese, as opposed to fairness, which is uh, even problematic to translate into Portuguese. So in order to avoid the, the, uh, the semantic problem of the usage of the expression, I was wondering if uh, you would have to go towards what's built in the uh, very conception of, uh, for instance, uh, righteousness. In, in the word righteousness, the idea of uh, doing the right thing is, uh, is clearly uh, expressed in the very word. So it seems to me that for Rawls, doing justice is doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. So in, in terms of a common language, it's, it, it's not problematic to put it, you know, to equate the moral and institutional level, since we are talking about the fair terms of social cooperation. So the idea of a, of a, of a rules of the game, you know, seems to be more or less uh, non-problematic, I would say, like in a, in a soccer game or any kind of game. Um, but it's not the, the case that he is simply pointing out uh, the rule observance, the impartial application of rules, but his idea, uh, as formulated in his first principle of justice, of giving priority to a set of rights and liberties, is in itself formulated in axiological terms. These are the first group of the so-called social primary goods. To that extent, he is not a Kantian, since he is here not a deontologist. So it, it, it is not as simple in, in Rawls as you have on the one hand rule following, and you have on the other hand the goods. But the rights and liberties are themselves formulated as goods, as social primary goods of the first category. So uh, they have then some overriding character and some lexical priority and so on. Um, but they are not completely in incomparable with uh, the rest of the, of the list of the goods. Um, so he is ambiguous on that. It would be fine if he simply said uh, what you are saying, what you are attributing to him in this deontologist style. So, oh, every one of us clearly has in mind the idea of rule following. That's the FIFA motto and so on. <laughs> um, and uh, 
then uh, we have to discuss uh, on a second level which rules should be applied or something. Okay? And it, it spelled uh, out that in terms of, of, uh, of um, goods in the axiology. But I, I don't believe that he does that. We have time to, for two more. Yes. Okay. Uh, Professor Horn, uh, thank you for your talk. Uh, I, I think that I agree with uh, half of your thesis. <laughs> uh, the first half that I agree with is that I don't think really that all immoral acts are unjust acts. For instance, if I kill someone, there's no sense in saying, oh, you are unjust, right? Uh, all those famous examples in the groundwork continue. Groundwork. If I lie to someone, if I, if I make a false promise, I don't think that, that that you say, "Oh, you are unjust." That in in this point, I agree with that with you. But I cannot see how a unjust action is uh, is not an immoral action. For instance, uh, the bakery example. Um, when you give priority to someone that is white and not someone that is black, for instance, right. or uh, if you uh, give priority to someone that is your friend and not to someone that's not your friend, for me, both are unjust and are immoral. And I don't know how you could think that um, uh, that this kind of unjust actions are not immoral ones. But I agree with the opposite. I think that not all immoral actions are uh, just unjust actions. And, and uh, yeah. Aristotelian question too. Uh, do you base your talk in this uh, distinction or uh, did you reflect about this distinction, uh, Aristotelian distinction uh, about justice as a general virtue and justice as a specific virtue and you think that uh, contemporary philosophers are using justice and uh, like this uh, first uh, meaning uh, that Aristotle gave to justice as a general or a total virtue? Yes, uh, to, to, to um, answer the last uh, point uh, first. Uh, in a sense, and that's correct. So in the fifth book of the Nicomachean Ethics, Aristotle distinguishes between justitia generalis and uh, Specialis Particularis, and um, in fact, uh, it is a curious relic in the tradition that we are speaking in moral philosophy, or some moral philosophers, in the line of, in the tradition of Mill, are conserving what Aristotle calls general justice. Exactly, exactly. That. That would be an element in a monograph that I perhaps will never write uh, on the conceptual history of, uh, of the concept of justice. Um, Kant, the groundwork. When I edited this volume, I was desperately seeking for references in Kant where he even mentions the word Gerechtigkeit. He does not. He does in a single, single context in the doctrine of, um, of right, in the doctrine of, of right, which is often mistranslated as the doctrine of justice. Mm -hmm. ah, completely wrong. The doctrine of right, there he calls justitia distributiva, the juridical system of a state. Yeah. Justitia distributiva. And there is no other occurrence of Gerechtigkeit in the entire Kant. And he uses the term in Latin, right? He uses justitia, or he uses justitia distributiva yeah. for the legal system, for, yeah, yeah. for for the legal system in the in the Rechtslehre, in the doctrine of right. So uh, he never he never uh, calls a, 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 an immoral behavior unjust. Never, never. You, you do not find that. Um, so, the bakery example. I, I believe that there is an, a, a, a strong distinction between um, racism and a, a simple act of privileging a friend. Racism is immoral, privileging a friend is... Ah, 
it, it causes my anger too, of course, uh, of course. Uh, a bad behavior in, in, uh, in the traffic uh, while driving a car makes me angry and outraged, but it is, it, is, it is a marginal case. I think maybe the problem here is a cultural question, because here in Brazil we have a lot of problems, for example, with politicians indicating friends of uh, nepotism. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. We are very angry about this kind of stuff. It's all over the world. Yeah, and, and no, my, 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 my example is. Yeah. My example is about a bakery shop. It's not about it's corruption and, and nepotism. Yeah. It's unfair and it's not moral. But this is the point. But it is yeah. unacceptable yeah. because it is unfair. So, there, it's, sorry, but the, the right example would be between nepotism and uh, privileging your friend. Then you have two unfair questions. The racism is a different thing. I mean, I'm not just breaking the rule. I'm, it is a different kind of, I mean, the bad action is different. The bad action yeah. in the case of uh, racism is not just you yeah. are next on the line, bad time, go over. No, the, yeah. the bad action is you are black and not serving you. Yeah. While in the other case is, oh, you are next on the line, but I'm going to break the rule. So this is a clear case of unfairness. Right. But I would, and this is my thesis against yours, uh, that also racism is a matter of fairness or not of justice in the sense that I'm treating you unequally even if you are equal from every relevant point of view because I mean if you say no skin color is a relevant point of view then you're being racist okay so um, I would say racism is despicable because it is unjust in this sense it discriminate between person who are equal and then you say no, it has it is unjust because it violates their dignity. They are just of different Yes, yes, I, I mean, we appreciate agree on the, the concept part, of dignity. We agree, yeah, we, yeah. we agree on the part yes, yeah. I will short the yeah, yeah. We agree on the, the idea that uh, this case is morally more relevant than the other. This is not the problem. The problem is why okay. is racism wrong? And you would say because it violates this condition and so on. And I would say no, it is wrong because it is a form of unjust injustice. Uh, I think we agree in yeah. our... Uh, Angelica Krebs yeah. has this fine, these marvelous examples. Uh, she, she says, oh, egalitarianism is a, is a misunderstanding of our moral point of view. If the owner of the bakery has five salespersons and he treats four of them in a bad way and one in a good way, then he could do justice by treating the fifth person also in a bad way. <laughs> and that shows that uh, egalitarianism is absurd as, as a, a source of um, a moral philosophy. You see the point? Yes, but you have this absolute justice. And then the point is, if I don't treat you properly, I'm violating, you would say, my dignity. I would say, no, I'm not giving you what is owed to you. Which is yeah. to be treated with For the sake of that distribution, we have someone in the line. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but what, um, what I owe to you is, uh, in the Krebsian terminology, the, this platonic, the, this uh, absolute uh, concept of justice. But, but what makes me so unsatisfied with that is that we normally use uh, justice not for human rights and all these strong cases of of um, morality, but, but for marginal cases. Yeah? Uh, justice is typically used in very, very marginal cases of, uh, of rule violation. I have one more question. Uh, I believe this will be uh, somehow for both, uh, both, both professors. Uh, I was thinking about uh, how animal rights, for example, would fit into this because uh, it's, I believe it's much more divisive than, than racism, for example. Then uh, I believe uh, a vegetarian or a vegan would think that is morally wrong and an injustice. But, but uh, I'm certain there are people that will see it as, as morally wrong, but not necessarily as unjust as injustice. And I, I don't know how, how uh, uh, the claim of the animal rights would fit 
into both of your theses. Mm -hmm. I would say that animal rights depend completely on mental capacities of animals. So um, clearly um, primates and, um, and dolphins uh, uh, are other extremely mentally developed uh, species are potential uh, bearers of, of rights. So uh, as a Kantian in this broad sense, uh, I would ascribe rights to those species and those individuals who have uh, outstanding mental capacities. Um, and, uh, so but, but, but not justice. That, it's a sort of question of justice. It's not a question of justice. But, okay, yeah, interesting. And I would translate it uh, in, in a different way because I would say it is a matter of equal treatment. I mean, if you think, uh, so well, primates or dolphins are endowed with uh, certain uh, relevant uh, features which uh, are the same that we have, then they should have been treated equally, at least in certain uh, aspects. Like, we, we do the same with children. I mean, we, we don't treat them as equal to us in the sense of having the same features that we have as adults, but nevertheless we think the morally relevant features are equal, so we treat them equally. So we don't use them as things. And you just transport this to animals. While if you start speaking of common good, then again you should... Uh, well, okay, animals have also a core of goods that are relevant for them, but why should we care? And then you need equality. I mean, uh, I wouldn't see that... I, I was, of course, uh, for some Lamar, I was exaggerating saying that every moral question is a question of justice, but I think there is, there is more place for justice in moral question than probably you think, but we remain. Uh, I think I can finish now, and, uh, but uh, this symposium continues to, uh, tomorrow at uh, 8 a.m. Nine, 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 nine a.m. with the communication, huh? Okay, thank you very much. Good night.